Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the second session of learning or working with ArcGIS. So here in this session we will work, uh, we will study or we will learn uh, working with uh, vector data. What are vector data? Well, we know that there are two major data structures under which uh, you know uh, uh, information is stored, uh, the spatial information is stored. One is the vector data, the second is the raster data. Raster data are a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, pixels continuously, uh, you know, uh, distributed in a, uh, you know, in a given datum or in a given, uh, you know, uh, domain of interest, right? Uh, whereas the uh, vector data are stored as either points, lines or polygons. The vector data are a discrete form of data, right, wherein you may have, you know, you may have on a particular point in space, you may have a measurable value, uh, but then in its neighborhood, one delta ball around may have no value, right. And then a little further, you may have another area with some value and without value and so on. So no data and yes data are sort of discreetly distributed in space as polygons, lines and points, that's it, right? So I'm going to, on your screen, what you see here is a source of vector data, which we have introduced in our lectures as well, called as the Diva GIS. So I've just Googled Diva GIS and it gives me this, uh, you know, first link as www.divas-gis.org. When I click on this, when I click on Diva GIS, free, simple and effective, this, per this particular page opens up. So now it has a lot of information about the data. You should always read the information of the data that you are using. Okay, very, very important. So I'm going to go into, uh, you know, without sort of spending time on other aspects, which you should definitely look at. Whenever you are writing papers or publishing reports for academic journals or professional, you know, business related or any other professional report, which is going to be in public domain or is going to be reviewed by some of your peers, uh, you must document the details about spatial data. It is incredibly important because the data come with a, it's metadata. Right. So its definition is embedded in the metadata. So if you don't if you don't read this documentation, you're going to misrepresent. You are very likely to misrepresent your analysis as well. Right. Um, OK, so I'm just going to click on free spatial data. Now it gives me data on country level, global level, global climate data, species occurrence data, crop genome, gene bank collection data, near global 90 meter resolution elevation data. Now that world hill shade that we saw on the map on ArcGIS portal in the previous session is a elevation map. So you can actually have one downloaded from alternate sources. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go to, uh, you know, uh, uh, and then it says a very good list of data sources from the Eden project. So just look up the Eden project. These are very interesting starting points, honestly. Um, one of the, you know, basic queries of people who, uh, you know, who want to work with spatial data is, where will I get these data from? Well, it turns out that there are now incredible amounts of resources as far as the spatial data are concerned, okay? Uh, such queries are now low, lesser and lesser, but when I teach, you know, students, you know, for first anxiety is, will I be able to access this data? Will I get these data? Well, yes, you will be able to access these data. Simple Google search will lead you to incredible amounts of spatial data, okay, of both vector and raster kind. Right. It may not be stored in your traditional 
dot csv formats that you are very used to but you know they are not also they are not they are very accessible in their own uh, you know right okay so let's look at the country level data so i'm going to click on download country level data for any country in the world it will give me administrative boundaries roads railroads altitude land cover and population density fantastic okay so i'm going to go for country level data okay i'm interested in so now again there's a lot of information all this information must be uh, you know uh, you should definitely uh, make a note of it uh, now look at the administrative boundaries the format is vector inland water vector line and area roads vector it's a line okay it's a line vector so you know so it's a line format elevation is a grid format and so on and so forth okay now i'm going to go to download the indian data so i'm going to go to india now i can download many types of area data i can download administrative areas inland water roads railroads elevation and so on and so forth okay i am first i'll just say download administrative areas and it says download and i say okay so here now i download a zip file it says end ind underscore adm dot zip I can go back and I can say, okay, I also want roads data. So, okay, and I say download. So it says, okay, now I'm downloading ind underscore roads dot zip file. So you will get these files as zip files and then you will have to unzip them. So let's do it for one of them. So I'm going to say show in folder and I'm going to say copy x i'm going to take it to where i am used to i'm to going to my practice sessions and i'm going to say all right india adm right click extract all and okay you can say extract all right so i have all these files that are now available in india adm okay this is the extracted version this was the zipped version on your screen ind adm is the zip version and there is this extracted version. So the extracted version now has many different files. Okay, it also has a license, which is a text document. You must open it and you must read it because it will tell you that these data can be used for what purpose. It is not allowed to redistribute these data and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to provide you this data anywhere. You have to download it yourself. I'm not going to distribute it. Okay, all right. And it has been extracted from this source called GADM DM database. So I am not making these data, okay? These data are publicly available on GADM database. And this is not the only source for India's administrative data, okay? You can get administrative data from Indian government sources as well, right? So it's up to you how you search the data, where you download them, it's all up to the analyst. Here I'm only providing you an example, a popular source of data for different countries, let's say you are doing inter different, you know, uh, you know, country level analyses. So you need these, you might use these data and so on and so forth. So far as India's data is concerned, India has its own, India would have its own database. If it's, you know, some other country like United States or China, Afghanistan, they will have their own sources. And it depends, you know, how accessible those data are, are they freely downloadable? You know, what kind of request process you have to go through to get to those data, all of those things are you know, subject matters, very contextual to countries and all that. Okay, their data distribution, privacy properties, and so on and so forth. But the point is that you should always, you know, uh, uh, it is not allowed to distribute, use them for commercial purpose without prior consent. Okay, so this is something to keep in mind while you are using these data. So now let's look at the data by itself. So we have IND underscore ADM zeros. So I have .cpg, .csv, .dbf, and .prj, and .shp, and .shx. So there are these six files that come under India ADM 0. And then similarly, there will be six other files that will come under ADM, India ADM 1, 2, and 3. So these are all vector data. If you have heard of vector data earlier, you would have heard of this name called the shapefile. So one of the extensions is .shp, whether it's India ADM 0, India ADM 1, 2 or 3, there is always a .shp file. This is a shapefile. Any vector format is always shared 
as or all is mostly usually stored as a shape file. When we talk of shape files, we don't just talk about one file. We talk about a bundle of files that come together. So shape files or vector data always come as bundles. What do these bundles comprise of? Well, you know, for starters, apart from SHP, I have a file called .prj. Now, you can take a guess what .prj would constitute. It will constitute the geographic, you know, projection system, right? Geographic coordinate system. What is the projection system? Is it GCS, uh, 19, WGS, 1984? It is, you know, is it Albers equal? You know, so there are various projection systems from which this data might be projected. This file is absolutely mandatory for me to have in order to project it onto ArcGIS. Can we construct these files on our own? Well, all of these are matters of training, right? But the point is that these data don't come just as a, uh, you know, dot at one file, okay? SHP is obviously the file which is going to be used to visualize the data onto ArcGIS. We will see that in a minute. Then we also have these files called DBF and .csv. .csv is something we are used to. .csv looks like a comma separated version. So it's basically a, uh, you know, something like an Excel sheet where, where the information is, uh, you know, stored in a gridded format. Now, how does that get integrated into a shape file, which is a visual vector file that we will see in some time when we visualize these data, okay? So, we have India ADM 0, 1, 2, 3. How are they different? Well, the best way is to actually look at them in the software itself, okay? So, you will see that under this, I have already sort of, you know, downloaded and stored these data under India ADM. So, I have India ADM, roads, railroads, and inland waterways. So, I have downloaded four types just for the purpose of education, okay? These data are not constructed by me. They are coming from a source. I have shown you the source, right? So if they have any kind of, you know, uh, a mismatch with the official Indian government data, that's not, uh, that's not my doing. It's just a source. Um, it's just an easily accessible source, which I am using for purely instructional purposes here. Okay. So here, let's go uh, and look at the data on uh, you know, on ArcGIS. So I've now opened the SSSE ArcGIS project that I had saved in the previous module, right? So I had saved this in the previous session, in session one. So in session two, I'm starting where I had, I had left. So I have my contents pane, I have my map pane, I have my catalog pane. Under catalog and under folders, I have this core of ArcGIS and under practice sessions, now I have my project I have also my India admin data, but where did other data go? So, you know, let me go back to the Windows Explorer. Yeah, okay. So, under practice sessions, I have now, uh, you know, uh, uh, one second, I have India ad admin data, but I also have these data, these two zip files, India ADM, India RDS, and, in and India ADM, which is the extracted version. The question is, why don't they show up here? Well, they don't show up here because I did not refresh this. So let me just right, uh, left click on this one um, under practice sessions and I'm saying to say refresh. Okay, fantastic. So it shows me India ADM now. It doesn't show me the zip files. So Arc Catalog does not catch or does not read the zip files, but it reads the extracted files. So now I have three types of one is the SSSE ArcGIS project, India ADM and India admin data. Now I can also, by the way, delete these data right from here. So I can say delete. Do you want to delete this item? I'm going to say yes. If I do that and if I go to my explorer, you know, and I do refresh, the India ADM file is gone from here. Okay. I can again extract India roads. I can say extract all, extract and if I do again, I go to practice sessions, I say refresh, it brings it here, okay? So I'm basically navigating folders from within ArcGIS. Basically, I'm just, I'm just trying to show you that, okay? Now, let's go to India ADM again. So here are my files, India ADM, here are my files. So, you know, I see a lot of these, uh, you know, India SHP, SHX and so on and so forth. 
there are some of these desktop files which you can ignore but you know now the packet is much larger but the idea is that you know we have all these files still now under this project if i go to india adm i see only four files the india adm 0 shp india adm 1 shp india adm 2 shp and india adm 3 shp so what happens is within our catalog it only is reading the shp file but in the original folder i have a packet of files not just one file right so it's very important to note this now if i move india adm 0 let's say i say copy and i say can you take it to india adm roads okay i can say paste now here what it does it's still working but it actually copies india adm 0 for ind adm folder to ind underscore roads folder now let's look at what happens to the physical folder now this is the arcgis catalog let's look at the physical folder i'm going to go to practice sessions and india roads and aha it actually brought all the files related to india adm 0 so when i move from files from within our catalog it's moving the bundle automatically this is very very good for me remember when i'm working when <clears throat> each layer <clears throat> when each image layer is going to have a packet of six to seven files and i'm moving them around then it may be very problematic for me if i were to do them physically i can make a mistake while doing them manually so it is always advised to move files from within our catalog because you cannot make a mistake when you do that okay all right so now that we have learned that you know the utility of our catalog really is that we can move files as full packets from one location to other in physical folders i'll have to manually select make sure nothing is left out if anything is left out the whole packet becomes useless because it may not then project these things right if you don't bring the projection it doesn't know what to visualize where to put the coordinates if you don't bring the csv it will not have the data that is embedded right so the best practice is to always move spatial data from our catalog and not you know physically right so so that's that's uh, knowledge stack number one okay so now now that i've done that um let me you know work with india adm data okay so i'm going to now start to work with india adm data so let's say i have india adm 0 so now what is the difference between difference between 0 1 2 and 3 well i have to actually look at the data and then make a sense of it so i'm going to simply click and drag the data onto the map and here we go okay so it's a data set which has a bit of a polygon sitting inside of it right um, so it shouldn't have been like that but you know this is a data set which has come from you know diva gis so i can write i want to rename it and i'm going to say rename it to diva gis so it has come from a source yeah so it can help me you know keep a track of let's say if i'm getting my data from different sources i can say okay i'm gonna say all right so rename i'm just for, for everyone i'm just going to always keep adding source just as as best practice okay a recommended best practice is to always add sources to the data in their names itself it's very helpful when you're writing papers that are based on multiple sources of data and so on and so forth okay we can move from one to zero to one what is the difference between zero and one? Oh, okay so now it seems that the one is also providing me states so the first polygon was an india level polygon the second polygon is uh, the state level polygon okay so now you have you have india adm and let's say you have uh, adm1 then you have india adm2 okay now india adm2 has even smaller polygons what are those right how do i know what these polygons are well let me actually go and look at india adm3 what it has and then we'll come back to this question let me project india adm3 
wow it has even further small polygons okay and i guess you know if you are from india you know you will start to make even if you are from any other country in the world you will start to make sense of what these things what these smaller smaller entities are they are basically smaller administrative units for example in india we have states as administrative units within states you have districts as administrative units within districts we have taluks or tehsils as administrative units so going from zero national level map to the second layer state level map to district level map and to tehsil level map how do i know that well on the left hand side in the content span what has happened in the process of looking at these things was that you know i added layers in addition to world topographic map and world hill shade if you were not working with either of them that is no problem okay that is no problem i you know if have if you were working with an older version which did not have world hill shade or world topographic it's not a problem you will see the map like this on your screen okay you will see it like this on your screen where you will not have a base map that's fine it doesn't change anything for me what is important is that each layer is somehow sitting on top of the other right each layer is sitting on top of the other okay and if i click right click let's say i right click on you know india adm1 let's say let's work with the state level layer okay now if i right click on the state level layer i can see various thing i can see attribute table which is going to be very important for me and i see properties so i will always start with properties you know i'm very i'm very, i really like to first look at my data look at its properties it directly throws me to this tab called source under properties and it's it tells me that this is a shape file feature class so it's a shape file we know it's a polygon data so it's a shape file and it's a feature class so so shape files are often referred to as features so polygons lines points are often referred to as features vector data instead of saying vector explicitly if it says feature data features are often referring to vector data in the arcgis terminology geometry type is polygon we know that shape file it shows me the exact location of it so if you see some data open and you don't know where it's located you can get to the location from here from the properties then you have your spatial reference wgs 1984 aha very good so i can actually now i know from my previous session or i can just go back and look at world topographic data okay and i can just say properties under spatial reference i have wgs 1984 so that is why i can overlay the state level file onto the world topographic map and actually start comparing regions okay let me try to do that so let me do this um, now the trouble is because of the color scheme which is called as a symbology so another thing here when i right click on to india adm1 you know a very interesting thing that i see is symbology if i go to symbology if i go to symbology i can actually you know uh, work and get a different color let's say i get a black outline in this black outline i do not you know uh, 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 i do not uh, uh, see the, the the solid color blue i only see the boundaries right so what i really have here is let's say data on rajasthan here is the state rajasthan called jodhpur and jaipur okay it makes sense you know these are two cities in rajasthan then we have new delhi i this there where it's supposed to be we have mumbai pune nasik you know they are where they are supposed to be right and we have uttar pradesh and so on and so forth now so, now what you know tells me that this is uttar pradesh this is rajasthan this is gujarat this is maharashtra well because you know i uh, you know because of my existing knowledge but if i am working for for different countries of data i may not be aware of the states of different countries so where do i where does this where do i make sure that i am at the right track that you know this is indeed going to be west bengal and this is indeed going to be jharkhand and this is indeed going to be uh, you know uh, 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 bihar and you know here i am looking at bhopal and indore which is in uh, madhya pradesh so how do i you know how do i really make sure so for that you know when we looked at the bundle the packet of the shape file it had this file called .csv 
that CSV file stores such information in what is called as the attribute table. So I'm going to right click and then select attribute table, open table, and which what it does is it opens attribute tables. Now here I have a FID, which is a field ID. It says shape, which is polygon. And it has an ID number, ISO name, it has a name zero, ID one, name one, and there are other information here. It has latitude, longitude, which is center of mass. But the point is I have a data set in terms of India ADM1 where every you know, entity, sub entity is a polygon. There are 37 such polygons. Okay, on the on the on the lower bottom bar, it says zero to thirty-seven selected, which tells me there are thirty-seven data points. So there are going to be thirty-seven unique polygons here. Okay, and as soon as I click on these polygons, I get what is also stored in the attribute table. Okay, so if I click on let's say Madhya Pradesh, it says FID eighteen. Okay, so if let me go to FID eighteen. Okay, and then India name one is Madhya Pradesh, name zero is India. Okay, I'm going to now go to my attribute table and go to FID 18. FID 18, here we go. It's a polygon, perfect. It is now selected. So if I click on the row, it selects the polygon for me. I have again, ISO known India, name zero is India, name one is Madhya Pradesh. So I have a cross validation of what my attribute table is actually showing. Okay, so similarly, you know, I can go and I can actually, you know, select uh, 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 Uttar Pradesh. Okay, so if I go up, I, I sorry, not here on the map. If I go up, you know, I look at Uttar Pradesh, it's going to be FID 34. So let me go to FID 34. Here we go, FID 34, and it should select Uttar Pradesh. If I want to select two different, you know, states at once, I can I press the control key. I can go to my, let's say again, I want to just look at 18, which is Madhya Pradesh, and I can select these two, and now you have both of them selected at once. Okay, so this way you can navigate through the data, uh, because under map, because explore, you know, tab is selected right now, you know, it's selected. Click, it gives me an information, it, it gives me a pop-up, it gives me all the information extracted from this attribute table itself. Okay, so the .csv file is equally very, very important. Now, if I, if I want to remove selections, I can on this, it's a very interesting one, I can just click on clear, right? I can also delete them, but don't do that because you know, it's permanently deleted. So you will have to then again download the data. So you have to be very careful with these functions. So here I can actually go onto this top, <clears throat> uh, top left corner and in this white, you know, box, if I click, it deselects everything. So it does the function, you know, in the older versions, you will not have these clear switch and all these buttons, but you can use, you can just explore and conduct all those functions even with without explicit tabs for them. Okay, so I can also close the attribute table, right? So I've understood that I have states here. Let me go to the next shape. Okay, I go to the next shape. Okay, now I am in the shape. I do not know. It seems to me that these will be probably districts. Uh, because of the symbology, again, I can't really visualize anything. I'm going to double click on the box here. Okay, earlier I right clicked and I went to symbology. Okay, this time I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take an alternate route and I'm going to click on this box with the color, with the pinkish color that uh, you know, India ADM2 has. I'm going to click it, it's going to directly take me to symbology. Fantastic, right? So I'm going to say, okay, I can do many things here, right? I can vary symbology by attribute, I can allow symbology property connections and so on and so forth. I can go to properties and I can actually play with a lot of things here. So under properties, I'm going to now say, you know, I need no color, I don't need a fill. With the outline, I'm going to change the color, I'm going to make it uh, I'm going to make that colorful, okay? And I'm going to say apply, and that's what we get, okay? So now I have my states and I have what inside them. Let's go back to India ADM2 and open attribute table and see what we have. We have districts. So after my states, so I have India, I have states, right? I have states, okay? 
and now and apart from that i also have districts okay i have districts okay um, all right so i can i now know that i have another file which is districts okay so i have india adm1 adm0 is just national okay i'm going to rename and make sure that so instead of adm0 i'm going to call it national adm1 i'm going to now uh, you know adm1 i'm going to right click and rename and i'm going to call it states adm2 now i've just learned that this is a uh, district so i'm going to just go and call it districts okay and now what remains is adm3 so in order to understand what adm3 is i'm going to go back and open adm3 okay all right so once i do that i can see that i have you know i can actually go in and i can say i want to um what if i want to zoom in if i just scroll my mouse i can zoom in i can zoom in zoom in zoom in so let's say i'm focusing on this district if i click on it i'll get some i'll get some uh, you know information about it i click on it it selects india adm2 because that's the that's by list order that's the topmost layer which has checked okay so it's clicking india adm2 if it's giving me fid 594 the name zero which is the nation is india that's the country name then uh, the state name is uttar pradesh and then finally name two which is district is hardoi so for now i am going to focus on hardoi right i'm going to focus on hardoi keep your eye on hardoi while i you know uh 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 let me just select hardori so let me go to india idm2 i will just open my attribute table i will search for fid 594 fid 594 because that's where i know hardori is 594 here you are india uttar pradesh district i must make sure that i have uh okay so let me try ah there we go i see hardori here name 2 right so okay so here we go and it selects her though fantastic so i'm going to uh, you know uh, uncheck this now when i check india adm3 it gives me even smaller boundaries within her doi okay so what's this higher resolution administrative unit okay i'm going to just right click i'm going to go to its attribute table and what i'm going to learn is that i now look at taluk okay now i'm looking at taluks within hardoi so if i click here i'm going to get india uttar pradesh hardoi and hardoi okay click here i'm going to get india uttar pradesh hardoi and bilgram so now i have this district this sub district is bilgram and this sub district is hardoi what about this one here on the eastern corner it's called sandila right so now i know that i'm working with taluks and they have different names how do i make sure that i can visualize them one over the other well i'll have to go to symbology i'm going to just uh, close the uh, the the map for a minute i've closed the map now uh, i am again going to symbology double clicking click to modify symbology all right let's do that okay it takes me directly to properties under galleries i can actually select some predefined you know symbologies under properties i can create my own so i don't need a fill so i'm going to say no color instead for the you know uh, uh, uh um okay instead for uh uh okay so instead for the boundary or the outline i'm going to use the color that is resembles the fill so let me do that uh okay i'm just going to try and try my best to replicate it but i'm not going to try too much so i'm going to just make it a little thicker right and i'm going to say apply i'm going to say okay when i apply it's still applying it's working 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 okay it's working all right so now what happens is that i see my okay i only see taluks what happened to my districts and my states well 
let's go back to the symbology for the districts and make them a bit thicker. Okay, I'm going to make it, let's say, thicker up to three point and then say apply. And now I can see my districts somewhat, right? Let me change the color to a darker color. Okay, apply and close. Okay, so now very interestingly, okay, I need to deselect everything. I'm going to go back to the attribute table of India ADM3 and I'm going to say deselect or clear selection. I don't want this selection. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, it's a district level. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So it's a district level data. So attribute table, please clear selection. Thank you. All right, so I can't see states. I'm going to go to the state symbology again and I am going to say, hey, I want to also view states. So I'm going to make its thickness the most. Okay, so here we go. All right, so now in black, whenever I see these black hashes, I know that those are state boundaries. Whenever I see the red hashes, I can say that those are, you know, my district boundaries and the blues obviously reflect the taluk boundaries. Okay, so I need to name, change the name. So I need to go to my, I can't see my catalog pane. I've lost my catalog pane. I'm going to now recreate it for a minute, just a second. I'm going to say insert or I'm going to go to view. I'm going to click on catalog pane. Okay, and now here I'm going to rename India ADM3 to say taluk. Taluks. Okay, so now I've renamed data in my folder. I'm going to try and see that whether that has happened. Okay, I'm going to say refresh. I'm going to go to the physical folder now. I'm going to the physical folder. Okay, so let's see where you are. Where are you? India ADM data, practice sessions, India ADM data, India ADM. Fantastic. Now look at this. Wonderful. We have India districts. So India ADM 2 has changed to India districts. India ADM zero has changed to India national. All of them in the packet at once. So that's how powerful our catalog is. So our catalog is a database management software within the ArcGIS packet package. Okay. And it is very efficient that you can see in front of your eyes. If you were to change this data on your own, you would have to go and change it to every physical file separately. Make sure the spelling is the same. You don't use capital letters somewhere, small letters somewhere. So it is very complex if you are going to physically manage data. It's not possible. And remember, we are just working with five files. On a particular project, one is working with at least 20 files, 30 files at once, right? So you can't possibly be thinking of working with these data, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, using, uh, you know, uh, physical sort of, uh, you know, processes. All right, let's go back. Okay, so now again, let's say this is India. So I know all the state names and all that. And you know, but let's say if this was not India, how would I know? So for that, I have this label feature, right? So I have this label feature. So I'm going to go to India ADM2, ADM1, where you have states. And I'm going to say label properties, label properties. When I click on this, the right hand side pane gives me label class, symbol, position, appearance, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to go to class and I'm going to say, I want name one feature, double click, name one. Okay, okay. So let me just delete everything on this expression and I'm going to double click on name one, which is, which is what I know the state name is. And I'm going to say, apply. Okay, and under symbol, I can then go and check the font name. I want Times New Roman. I'm a fan of Times New Roman. Okay, I want 10 point is too small for me. I want 14 points. Let's say I'm going to say apply. I can also check, you know, figure out the name, the color of the font and so on and so forth. Right. So after I'm done, I can close this pane. I can go back to India ADM one and click on label. As soon as I do that, it wonderfully puts the names of the of the shape onto the onto each state and because of the way i have structured my symbology so what i have done is i have checked 
the state file, the district file and the taluk file. I've changed their symbology to make sure that I can visualize all three at once, right? And then what I'm doing is that I am actually, you know, uh, I can actually, you know, I can improve the symbology a little bit. Just give me a second here. So I am going to try and apply. Um, yeah, so this is too big. Apply. Um, and maybe I'll make it a little lighter. Yeah. Uh, Apply. Okay, so you know, I know that uh, maybe a color like yellow might just, yeah. Okay, so it's too much. Okay, apply. Okay, so you can play around with symbology, but you know, the ultimately uh, the idea is to sort of figure out a way to, you know, visualize all the different details. So interestingly, I have different states. I within Uttar Pradesh, I can you know, which is demarcated by this black boundary. Within that, the red or the crimson boundaries are uh, you know the district boundaries. Within that, the green boundaries, uh, which can be a little darker. Let's try a little darker. Yeah, are uh, fantastic. Now these are my uh, you know uh, 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 taluk boundaries. So here is a symbology example, a labeling feature example, where I am able to visualize different parts of India. And I'm able to, you know, uh, uh, create a very nice map, which is sort of you can take this map, clip this map, download this map directly from ArcGIS and take it to publication. Okay, it identifies different features within ArcGIS. You know, it we are playing with symbology, we are playing with labeling features. And we are trying to create a, a create a uh, you know a a a a you know a visual a picture of multiple layers put together one over the other where polygons of different size are visualized at once their location their shapes their look you know their sizes um, their respective locations and so on and so forth. One last tool I want to just talk about before I you know we move on is this tool called measure. So let's say, you know, if I want, if I go on to the, 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 you know, the, uh, you know, this, this area where I'm at the border between, uh, you know, Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh, I can go to this, you know, use this, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this tool called measure. And I can actually go and look at, you know, the distance from particular district, let's say, you know, uh, the, dis the, the, the neighborhood district here of, a, of your taluk of Madhya Pradesh, its lowermost point, to the uppermost point of this taluk of, uh, you know, uh, Uttar Pradesh. It is 107 kilometers. So any two points in space that I'm interested in or any path that I want to traverse, I can actually create a measure of them, right? So the measure tool is another thing that I'm just mentioning, I'm just showing you as a closing sort of tool here which you can use to quickly get measures of distances between units on a map. This will become useful, more and more useful in the future exercises, okay? So thank you, this is it for session two. In the next session, we'll start manipulating vector data. Right now, we have just visualized these things, okay? Uh, all right, so see you in uh, the next session for ArcGIS in learning vector data. Thank you. Mm -hmm.